South Africans will once again have to dig deep in their pockets to meet their commitments following the decision by the Reserve Bank to raise the repo rate. This was the 10th consecutive increase and the Reserve Bank saying while the hikes might be hitting consumers hard, the long-term gains will be worth it. Well, let's discuss this now and we're joined by uh, Dr. Dick Forsland. He is a senior economist at the AIDC. Dr. Forsland, thank you very much for your time. You're calling for Reserve Bank Governor Lese Jahanyaho along with his Monetary Policy Committee team to resign. Why? Well, uh, uh, the, the, obviously, we, we need to have some uh, new people uh, at the helm of the Reserve Bank. Mm. And I mean, the, the decision that was taken now uh, on Thursday, uh, it even calls to the, in, into questioning the 30-year the uh, truth of having an independent Reserve Bank who is independent uh, from all other concerns than, than the value of the rand or inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the truth of the matter seems to be that they are not that independent. And uh, when I think about it, uh, maybe when I think about it, who should replace them? Uh, if we stand by this monetary policy paradigm, mm. you could as well uh, replace them by, by maybe graduate students or someone uh, maybe a journalist at Newsroom Africa could just watch the, the, what the Fed, the Central Bank of the United States is doing, and then uh, the, the Reserve Bank of South Africa, our central bank, would just follow suit, because that is what the Reserve Bank is doing right now. I, I wonder... Uh, may, yeah. let, let me interrupt you for a second there, Dr. Forsland, because when you raise the issue of their non-independence or not being independent i hope i'm saying that correctly this has to do with yeah. what you have suggested and that is that the reaction by the rand to the 50 basis points increase took an unexpected turn for Hanyaho and team what do you mean when you say they did not expect the rand to react in the manner in which it did when they raised interest rates unanimously, by the way. Yeah, the previous nine, nine times when they have increased the uh, interest rates, then the, the RAND has been strengthening in, in value with by 20, 30 percent, 20, 30 cents or something like that. Hmm. And this didn't happen this time. Uh, there can be many reasons for this. In, in our media release, we, we, we propose or speculate that, that uh, maybe uh, sort of those who are trading in, in currencies realize that this will, this means, uh, no long-term gain for the economy. The, the Reserve Bank is, is, uh, stamping on the economy and it will increase more, there will be more unemployment and the economy will contract. It will, it, it, there will be no increase in, 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 in economic growth, uh, this year. And, uh, uh, that can be one reaction. Uh, another one can be uh, the disappointment that they didn't even move further. Uh, a third reaction can be that, that uh, they hinted to maybe that they will increase the interest rate again uh, at the next MPC meeting. Mm. And then, of course, uh, those bonds will be more valuable because they will give, give a higher interest rate. And then money traders or, or bond traders, they started to sell off. Uh, because they were expecting that the, the value of the bonds would, would, would go down in the future, and they just sort of uh, penciled that in into the, the reaction. I mean, it's very hard to, to predict uh, what, what will happen with the RAND. Uh, so, and that speaks to the, 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 that, that the Reserve Bank and the Central Bank of, of South Africa has, has to go into another paradigm. And, and all the progressive measures that, that you could propose now, it, it demands uh, capital controls. You yeah. have to have the control over fast uh, money trading on the financial market. And I mean, I listened to uh, half an hour on SAFM this morning, and it just ended now, with three different economists who, who are within the ruling paradigm of free markets. And I noted that there's not one word of unemployment during this half 
hour. The, the U word, it doesn't appear in the, in the paradigm of, of that is ruling our, our now. But, but I mean, if you take a decision in, in a situation of, of mass unemployment, of over 40% unemployment by the expanded definition, and you know that this will increase unemployment in the country, you are morally wrong, you are politically wrong, uh, and you are, it's socially dangerous. So, so you have to have sort of move into another view of how to see this. Uh, otherwise, uh, I don't know what will happen to the economy and to the social fabric of the country. I mean, uh, uh, we already have people reacting, so the working class people and the poor are reacting to, the com- to, to this situation by, by looting uh, with cable theft and, and sort of basically uh, destroying infrastructure and selling it off to get an income. Yeah. Uh, and I guess many of them are organized by crime syndicates. But, but that is the long, long-term effect of what happened on Thursday. Dr. Fosland, let me ask you this question, because it's important for me to get as clear a response to the allegation that you make. And that is that Reserve Bank Governor, Lese Jachanyaho, along with the MPC members, are not acting independently. You're suggesting that they are pandering to someone's interests. Why do you say that? And who might this be? Well, the, it, you can just put it in a diagram, and you can see that they are since 15, 20 years they are tracking the interest rate of the U.S. central bank because they are in favor of sort of as free market as possible, free financial markets as possible. And in such a situation, uh, you are independent of, of the social and political situation in the country, the disastrous social situation, but you are not independent of the, of the dangers and the, and the, of the, of the, of the, what is happening in the global economy. You are not trying to delink at all from uh, uh, sort of the, the, the interest of the financial industry and what, it, what is happening elsewhere. Yeah. You are saying they, 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 they produce very complicated and learned report, the MPC, about sort of the prospects of the South African economy. But when it comes to the decision, you can follow it in the diagram and they are simply tracking the, the interest rate of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Fed, of yeah. the central bank in the United States. So we have no independence of, of the Reserve Bank. Uh, and to, to establish that, you need capital controls. You need to stop to borrow so much in, in, in foreign currency as the government is doing now and turn to internal domestic funds, which are huge. And we have mentioned many times, uh, Koli, uh, the, 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 the reserves that are the over now is 2.5 trillion rand in the state pension funds, which should be used by, by the government for low interest le, uh, sort of borrowing yeah. without hurting the interest of pensioners and the members of the state pension fund. GFPF. Let me challenge you in this way, Dr. Fosland, because there is no opposing view, but there is one written by Nick Headley. He's a, a columnist for News 24, and the headline of his story goes, don't blame the Saab, as in the Reserve Bank. Higher interest rates are the ANC's doing. And this is one of the reasons he says that. He says one of the main reasons the Reserve Bank had to raise interest rates was to protect the value of the rand, which has been clobbered by an endless string of ANC blunders most recently the rolling blackouts and foreign policy crises. Is the ANC not to blame? Well, the ANC government, the ruling party, is to blame for a lot of things, of course. Uh, I'm not a supporter of, of, of the ruling party. But if you, if you read uh, uh, sort of carefully his thought leader, and in fact I read it today, you will see that he also says that ah, maybe this will be the last interest rate hike now mm. because uh, the, it's dangerous to hike the interest rate more. But I, th- I think with all due respect, uh, 
if you are in the in in this paradigm of free uh, sort of financial flows and and you shouldn't touch uh, 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 hair or, or, or straw of hair on the skull of 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 the financial industry yeah then the prospect of a new interest rate hike uh, sort of two months from now is lingering all that is needed is that the, uh, that the uh, sort of the American central bank, the U.S. central bank, is increasing their interest rate further. Yeah. And I mean, they are doing it for a completely different uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, reason than than the Reserve Bank. They have sort of a growing in uh, un- growing employment in the economy, and they are kind of doing the classical thing uh, in a capitalist economy that ah oh, you maybe there are too much demand local demand in the economy maybe there will be a pressure of inflation now let's tighten the interest rate. Mm. South Africa has a completely opposite situation than this, and still they take the same measure, and it's all about sort of free financial flows. Uh, the, foreign borrowing and not using sort of the domestic funds that are at at the the governments or the reserve bank's disposal if we would have a rational and proper discussion about it. Yeah. So so uh, they are increasing the interest rate in US for for other reason than what the reserve bank is doing and and uh, we are contracting the economy uh, by doing this and increasing unemployment in the country and if you if you increase if you sort of voluntarily increase unemployment in the country in this situation yeah they are then you must be in the wrong political social and moral moral territory and oh. that is why we made this call for the for Kanyahu that the governor Kanyahu uh, to to step down uh, but of course it's not the only thing you have to do you have to sort of change the whole macroeconomic setting you can't sort of only sort of rule the economy with the interest rate but you can damage the economy with the interest rate and i think that that is what is happening right now final question and it is exactly premised on the issue of unemployment which is a main source of worry you have already pointed out in the statement that this is going to be a massive impact on South Africans who are squeezed on all sides. But the governor said the following, and you actually quoted him here. He said, the failure to act against inflation would mean that we are shortchanging the poor. There he is saying, I have the best interests of the poor at heart, and that's why I've got to deal with inflation the best way I know how. Yeah, but but as we say in the statement also, Colin, uh, it it if if the inflation, if the CPI headline inflation is six, seven, or eight percent, it matters much more to a working class family if, as a result of this interest hike, uh, one more family are losing their jobs. Because, because working class families and extended families and, and poor families, they are, they are dependent on the incomes. They are sharing the incomes uh, of the household. And if it means that, if, if the policy of the Reserve Bank means that unemployment uh, increases, if one more family member loses their job, immediately it has a disastrous effect on the, on the, on the lives and livelihood of this family, of course. Yeah. And, and we have already hunger in the country and so on. So it's morally, politically, socially, it was the wrong decision. And, and the, the, the Reserve Bank is not independent of, of the, of, it, it doesn't try to sort of create an independence from financial markets and from the U.S. Uh, sort of central bank. It is tracking it. It's tracking it. And that has very bad consequences, consequences for the economy of South Africa and for the working class and the poor. And, and this is a long term effect uh, of this. It, it's not that the pain is, is sort of pain is now and the, and the, and the will be much better better later, uh, the pain that we are creating now will have long-term effect uh, for the majority of, of, of South Africans. Dr. Dirk Fosland, let me thank you very much for your time and analysis of this situation. He is a senior economist from the AIDC. There you heard him. He says, and his entire MPC must go.